Welcome to Strength in the Numbers. My name is Andrew Codd, accountant, author, and commercial finance entrepreneur. And it's my job each week to bring you leaders in finance and business and deconstruct with them their real stories, insights, and hard-won lessons into practical advice on the key strengths and qualities you need to remain relevant in accounting and finance today, as well as the steps you can begin to take to elevate the impact you make to have a fun, successful, and rewarding career in accounting and finance. Now let's go over to the show. Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Strength in the Numbers. Our guest mentor today I'm really excited to share with you is Lance Rubin. He's founder and CEO of Model Citizen and over the last two decades Lance has developed a strong reputation throughout the industry as being a highly accomplished and natural thinking financial modeler. Now financial modeling is probably an area we've not really covered before on the show but you know, my own personal experience is a great way of delivering impact and value for our organizations i mean lance is a prime example of this he's got so much going on you can check all the things he's working on in his bio but on the show we cover the three skills that lance has developed to make his models more impactful he also goes on to describe some baby steps for us to follow so we can raise our financial modeling skills and he also goes into the five elements that make up a good financial modeler and we also provide links to his blog on this as well so this episode is jam-packed with really useful ideas and techniques and tools that you can practically apply to really improve your financial modeling skills. Now we also went through a lot of resources, you can check those out at the detailed show notes at sitnshow.com slash podcast slash 044. And without further ado, over to Lance and the show. Sure, we'll do, Andrew. So I spent 20 years in corporate across uh, PwC, where I started as an auditor, and I fell in love with uh, spreadsheets and um, you know, rolling forward my lead schedules and auditing and slicing and dicing in information through pivot tables. And, um, and it wasn't until I audited a, a model of an actuary as part of that audit process that I realized um, you could make one plus one equals three. And it, it blew me away, the financial engineering capability that was out there, and I wanted to get more of it. So I eventually left um, PwC, joined Investec Bank uh, in their corporate, uh, actually at that stage it was their, pro- their property investment banking area. I then moved to uh, corporate finance and then property private equity. And you know, all within the bank, but largely to do with financial modeling. And I kind of took a leap forward in terms of my modeling skills. I was doing three-way cash flow modeling, um, income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow for those that aren't sure what a three-way is. And um, really just you know, lifting, lifting the game. Unfortunately, the GFC hit and I had to reposition my career. And so I decided to go back into finance at the National Australia Bank, which is one of Australia's um, big four banks, to really try to leverage my skill as a financial modeler and an investment banker into finance. And I became a finance partner. So I was a finance partner for the debt, uh, debt capital markets, spent a number of years as a finance partner and was involved in some of the strategic change around finance partnering. And then I decided to go a level up and, and manage bigger teams and step away from finance partnering, get more leadership skills. So I spent seven years at NAB and then, um, Two years ago, I uh, had the opportunity to, to take a package and I uh, decided I'd go on this journey and try and help more people other than the people inside the bank upskill in financial modeling and, and leverage the skills that I was able to apply in investment banking into finance. And it's, um, it's wonderful to be out because I, I can see there's just a huge demand for it and, and people are unsure what does finance partnering mean, what are the skills that we need. Uh, you know, and and it, you know, and it's it, it's just different for every person. And I think you know, connecting with yourself, Andrew, and, and and others, you know, Anders and 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 Brad and and the like, um, you know, on LinkedIn is wonderful. So I think um, there's a community out there that's out there to help, and I'm I'm glad to be one of them. And actually, just just it's, it's an interesting journey because you went from I guess your sort of traditional finance assurance route or route into investment banking, and then back into finance partnering again. Like, what sort of skills do you think you picked up in investment banking that you you found most leveraging in the finance partnering side of things? Oh, wonderful! So I think uh, quite clearly financial modeling. Probably say so that's probably the mm-hmm. number one skill. I, I had to build three way models. I had to build them quickly. I had to build them accurately. My models were being audited by um, an accounting firm, ah. so I didn't have the luxury of hard coded numbers and copying and pasting. Um, you know, I had to be built efficiently. The balance sheet had to balance. 
Um, and so, um, you know, I spent a lot of time, a lot of long hours um, doing it. And, and, and it does take a lot of time to build a, a good model. And so, um, you know, now I, I use technology to build some of the models that, that I build, still Excel-based, but extremely uh, automated. And, you know, so I'd say financial modeling was the first skill set that, that I learned. But then then I had to take myself out of the model and go see clients um, and, and do deals. And, and I think the communication and building relationships with customers because as an investment banker, you know, you, you have to service the client. The client is relying on that model to raise capital and to expand their business. Um, and the auditors uh, want to know, you know, what's going on. Um, my boss wanted to know. The, the, the board wanted to know. So you had to sit and, and, and communicate what was in the model to all these stakeholders. Um, so I think, you know, the, the art of building relationships, I think Anders talks about that as a, as a key skill. As an investment banker, you have to have it. If you look at any investment banker, they're pretty charismatic, confident type of people. And they have to be because that's exactly what they need to do in their, in their jobs. And so when I look at finance partnering, that's a, a, a great skill that I managed to develop in investment banking, as opposed to an auditor where you're kind of looking at what happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're trying to talk about something that's, that's, that's less tangible because it's looking forward. So when you're raising yep. capital and, you, and, and you're doing forward projections, you know, there's a lot more that can go wrong um, in terms of, um, you know, a, a model and, and a and set of assumptions. So I think definitely, you know, the relationship building component and probably part of that is the storytelling and, and communication aspects. And then a third one I'd say is the resilience. You know, the amount of hours that, 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 that I had to work. Uh, I did a 24-hour stint once. Um, so, you know, not to be repeated again in my life, Definitely. hopefully. Um, so, so, um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, you build a huge amount of resilience and, and I guess going back into NAB where the latest I ever worked was 10 o'clock, um, where 10 o'clock was kind of the average ending time at Investec, you know, um, quite regularly I'd finish at 2, 3 AM, but you know, I was there sitting building a model and because I'm so passionate about financial modeling, it didn't feel like work. And that's when I knew I hit my, you know, the passion, the thing that drives me, um, because it didn't feel like work when I was when I was in investment banking. So it was, you know, it was a good a good time to be in there. But definitely those three core skills around financial modeling, relationship building, and selling, and and storytelling, um, which is all about communication. And then the third one is uh, building resilience and, and a high work ethic. I think is is definitely things that that have taken me through NAB and beyond. I think our audience will really enjoy you breaking it down to those three items. And you know, you just telling a story there, Lance, it like takes you back probably what uh, ten years. I could just see myself just living and breathing that, you know, and and seeing those things come through. I think we share a similar passion for financial modeling. But yeah. I think what you did with it, you didn't sit on the models. You know, you went out there, built relationships, told stories about them and around them. And then you actually put in the effort to, to get the resilience to deliver the impact. I mean, that's what good business partnering is about. And I'm trying to think in terms of your audience, is there perhaps any sort of things on that journey? If they're looking to do one of those three or any of those three, are there sort of maybe a few baby steps they could take to, to start getting on the level? Yeah, I think, um, you know, probably the first one is, um, you know, lifting their financial modeling skills. Um, you know, I, I had a team of 26 staff at NAB and um, I observed their month end process. And apart from it being um, painful, I guess, to, you know, they also didn't enjoy it. There's a lot of copying and pasting. It wasn't automated. The systems weren't there. So, you know, what I wanted to do is try and help and support them um, through financial modeling training and automation. So the key, the first baby step, I think, is definitely have a look at some financial modeling uh, training. Um, I'm an approved trainer for the FMI, which is the Financial Modeling Institute. Uh, right now, you have your CA, CPA, and CFA, probably your three mm -hmm. main qualifications in finance that, that are yeah. globally recognized. And there, there is no globally, single globally recognized um, um, accreditation for financial modeling, um, except oh. um, the FMI, I think, is, is, has started it. Um, so the FMI as a, um, a three levels of accreditation, the advanced financial modeler, which is the AFM, the, um, then you have the uh, CFM, which is the chartered financial modeler, and then the um, master financial modeler. The, um, and I guess, you know, similar to the CFA where you have those three levels, you know, they've only recently started. The guys who ran Model Off, the uh, World Financial Modeling Championships, have partnered with the Marquee Group to deliver the FMI. So you have, you have some really global um, players involved. The FMI also has an advisory board, which have the likes of PwC and KPMG and EY and others sitting on it. So, you know, it's it certainly got um, a, a lot of 
uh, street cred, if you want to call it mm -hmm. that, um, <laughs> in terms of financial modeling, and is, is being led by some some some, some global players, um, and, and it's a great thing to do. So I definitely recognize, you know, definitely recommend people have a look at it. The FMI is extremely practical. It's a practical exam. Oh, you sit down, idea. you build a model. You don't have, you can't bring in your own laptop. You get issued a laptop. Everyone works on the same machine and you get, you get a set of assumptions and you have to build in four hours. You've got to build a, a three way model uh, and w with a balance sheet and cash flow and an income statement. So I think it's, um, and obviously the balance sheet has to balance. So, you know, these sorts of things are, and you have rev revolvers and you've got debt and you've got a whole bunch of other assumptions. And so, so yeah, I think it's great that, that people can actually cut their teeth into something that and point to it and then actually use it as a, as accreditation, so I think you know financial modeling is part part of that. Uh, I think the rest is is getting out of your comfort zone, um, and you know that's hard. You can't really learn that. Um, but I think one of the things that you know um, you can probably tell from my accent, I'm South African, um, living in Australia, um, and I've lived in three cities. And so I think throwing my throwing myself into challenges and 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 grappling with it and and being resilient. I take um, uh, what's called a growth mindset with a lot of things and and. Um, you know, I think being able to um, navigate through through complexity is a skill set that that is definitely something that that people want to develop. the The key thing is you can't develop it unless you throw your thing you, yourself at a challenge. So I think you know, yeah, people, it's catch twenty two. Yeah, it's catch twenty two. So people say, oh well, I want to build resilience, but then I don't want to do <laughs> that stuff that's difficult. So I think yeah. you know, you you can't have your cake and eat it. If you want to build resilience, you have to throw yourself challenges. I've thrown myself a huge challenge. You know, after 20 years in corporate, I've decided I'm going to start my own business, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, you know, pick up, pick up and, and believe in myself and try and, uh, you know, drive some value for people out there and um, down the track as well, obviously for myself. But ultimately, you know, I think throwing yourself at, at things that you're not quite sure how it's going to turn out is, is part of that, that journey. I think I like the way you sort of said you can't have your cake and eat it. I mean, if you, if, if you really want to go out and add value, it's going to involve some element of complexity risk. taking yeah. it on risk and where there's risk there's generally better returns if you manage the risk very well and you don't know how to manage the risk well unless you become exposed to it uh, get to play with it and and figure out how things work through so look i really appreciate you sharing that yeah i, I guess you know you know now you take it on sort of your own sort of businesses and, and so on like what's exciting you about your work at the moment most um what's exciting me most is really the um the, the globalization the, the the collaboration that 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 that, that we're able to generate th um through things like linkedin and and, and these sorts of conversations that you and I are having around the world. So I think what, what's really exciting for me is that I'm able to now collaborate with people all over the world on topics that I'm passionate about. And I think, um, you know, when, when you're uh, in your own hometown or your own city or your own corporate or your own job, it's very insular. And I think what, what's really, yes. what I'm really enjoying at the moment is, um, yes, I do wear many hats and, and I, I often get confused which hat I'm wearing at the time when I'm talking. But, um, you know, uh, that's, that's, that, that's a challenge and exciting in itself. But um, I think that the key thing for me is, is, is getting part of the community and, and, and being out there and, and talking to people. Um, the next thing I enjoy is no, no day is the same for me. Um, no week is the mm -hmm. same for me. Um, I was in Sri Lanka three weeks ago. I'm going to India. I've never, never thought in my, you know, I would have liked to have gone to India sometime in my life, but did I ever think I'd be going to India for uh. financial modeling? No way. So I'm going, <laughs> I'm going there in July. Um, in, in June, I'm going to Malaysia, to KL, um, and I'm trying to get a, a trip back to South Africa as well um, to, to run some training and then hopefully in the UK. So, you know, I think, um, you know, what's great about um, the skill that, that I've got is that it's highly sought after. There's not many people that can, build models that they, they need help they want to try and navigate the, the challenges that we have in finance around automation and finding ways how to be better at their jobs um you know something which are, are it resonates with me and and i can certainly help and and i guess like in terms of you know those extra challenges you're taking on you sort of mentioned the the financial modeling is that to do with, with the work you do at model citizen Yes, that's right. Spot on. So um, it, it does, but it also touches all the others. So I guess one of the things that you know, someone said to me, oh, how do I do all these three things? At one stage, I was at KPMG as well. I left them last, <laughs> last year to join SQL. So I, 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 you know, <laughs> I have cut down on what I'm taking on because I couldn't manage um, KPMG as well. So I was in the KPMG modeling team for just over two years. And um, I didn't have experience in a modeling team within a big four, which is 
you know, one of the reasons I went in, but also I felt like I was with like-minded people. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's the same thread throughout. So financial modeling actually touches everything that I do. And so I don't see it as three different things. So, you know, model citizen absolutely is the core financial modeling consulting business. Uh, SQL CFO, which I'm the group CFO for, although, you know, um, David Boyer, who's, who, who's the CEO, he's, he's an accountant. He's a, he's a CFO. He's effectively a, and he's, and he's been a, a CFO. So he's not, he doesn't need, technically need a CFO for him, but what he does need is someone to help him deliver and, and for want of a better word, commoditize or automate um, yeah. modeling for, for the group. So, um, so I've joined C SQL with that in mind and the outperformer I've joined, um, as a partner of the outperformer because, because, um, you know, ultimately I, I, that, you know, what Brad's trying to drive in terms of finance and, and careers uh, is very much connected to, um, uh, the, the skill set of financial modeling. How do you communicate? How do you run scenarios? How do you make things more real life? How do you bring value to the table? Um, and, and make better decisions. And, and I think, you know, financial modeling is, is absolutely the low hanging fruit that um, that'll help you do that. And that's, that's quite neat because it's, it's probably, you're probably leading in to answer my next question, which is if there was one area in accounting and finance, we could all look to do better in, in the next 12 months, what area would that be? I think I've probably answered it. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So financial modeling. I don't know how many times yeah. we can man mention financial modeling on the call, but I guess it's you know when you talk to me, you'll probably you probably get that quite a lot. But um, yeah. definitely, I think that's that's a key thing. But I'd probably explain it a bit more, uh, Andrew. Uh, you know, yeah, go on. Yeah, exactly. Financial yeah. modeling. You know, and and I wrote a I wrote a blog on this um, a while ago, and I'm busy preparing another one because I'm I'm updating it because I've changed my mind a little bit. So financial modeling is not just Excel. And I think this is the thing that, that people get confused with. And so when I started, I explained, I said, financial modeling is three skills. Now I think it's five. Um, so three, okay. I started with three and I said, okay, financial modeling is absolutely Excel, right? You need to mm -hmm. know how to use Excel better. You need to understand the functions. More importantly, you actually need to understand the formulas and how to construct a three-way model and understand how, to, how, how do things interrelate. The next part is accounting. You cannot build a three-way model. You cannot build a balance sheet that balances without understanding accounting. So accounting and finance is critical. The third aspect of that is business acumen. So you know, you know, ultimately, when you build a model, it needs to reflect the core business drivers, um, the value change in that business, and um, and I guess that you know, you put those three together, and you've got a pretty good model. The other two aspects I've now added onto that, which is going to come out in 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 the, in the blog, the the one is problem solving. So I think, you know, with problem solving skills, you can have all those other three, but if you actually don't know how to solve problems, mathematical problems and business problems, then it's going to be difficult for you to build the, because often, you know, you'll have a problem, but you won't know the logic of how to solve that problem. So you have to test and, and, and be agile and, and, and reiterate. So, Exa so I think, you know, yes. the problem solving skills is, is a new one. Um, and then the fifth one is, is technology. Uh, and I think, you know, if we sit there and say, you know, um, you know, Excel on its own is, is, is you know, is, is going to help us. I think, I think that's probably wrong. You know, there's other tools that's and other strange. technologies yeah. that, that you need to um, embrace. And, and um, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm an absolute lover of Excel, as you probably would know. But I, I do think that there's other tools that sit inside and outside of Excel that can help you make your job better. I use a number of other technologies that are um, either embedded within Excel as an add-in or sit outside Excel. Um, and so, I think, you know, these sorts of tools, you know, you need to start looking at in addition to Excel. I'm not saying, you know, don't, Excel's not dead by any stretch, no matter what anyone else says, no matter all, you know, all the marketing great. firms and all the technology firms, you know, an investment bank is not going to build a model without anything else other than Excel. And deals are going to be done on the New York Stock Exchange, London Stock Exchange, ASX, JSC, <laughs> so based on Excel spreadsheets. So anyone that says Excel spreadsheets is gone is deluded. But anyway, that's a separate oh, issue. Oh, I so agree. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we could probably have a whole podcast on that one. Like, yeah, I completely <laughs> I agree with you. I, I think yeah, actually, be, why not? Excel is dead. Because yeah, you know right. what? I'm sick and tired of people saying Excel is dead. Um, uh, uh, yeah, there are enhancements to it and there's better ways to do it. But it's, it's far from that. Yeah, no, I, I think I think you've nail, hit the nail on the head with those five areas, and I think our um, our, our audience are getting real good gold dust there. I mean, that if 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 you approach any situation modeling wise with those five elements in mind, 
get those right before you then sort of take it as a story and partnering with the business and trying to drive impact and influence off the back of that then i think we'll be going a long way and i i do feel like you lads i think it's low-hanging fruit you know get this right it opens up so many avenues to drive value and opportunity down the line and improve decision making it's important to get the modeling right and yeah, uh, delighted absolutely. to have you on a guest to discuss this so i mean really appreciate sharing those now i think i'll maybe step it up a bit and and uh, you know do a few rapid fire questions at you sure. so 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 lance like in terms of you know throughout your career probably you've received many different bits of advice what's the best bit of advice you've received my father uh, gave me one piece of advice he says don't be afraid to try anything even just once <laughs> <laughs> and um you know he, he was referring to um uh you know a few other life uh, non-business related non-business matters. yes but um, lessons, yeah. but, but, but but ultimately you know I, I have applied that in everything that i do you know um you know people will say things about certain things that don't work you know you, you have to try you have to try just because yep. other people have failed at it um and sometimes if it's really something that 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 you want to do and you fail the first time maybe you have to try harder so I think, you know, um, you know, so the first one is try the first time. If it's something you're really passionate about, you, you have to try again. You're not, you're not always going to get it the first time. But I think, you know, um, you know, financial modeling skills, when I first built my first model, it, you know, it was, it was hard. And I had to constantly go at it um, time and time again. Fortunately, that was my job. Fortunately, the investment bank was paying me to build a three-way model. So I think that's the challenge for finance. You know, no one's going to give you, you know, um, weeks on end to build their model because you've got a whole lot of other things to do. So I think, you know, um, you know, one of the things is is try, just just give it a go. Um, and I think that's that's really helpful. Yeah, I love that bit of advice. It it, it is quite quite fortunate you were actually paid to do that for a living, <laughs> is yeah. to keep trying at it and getting it to balance. But like, boy, I I tell you what, I even if if people don't find a passion or whatever, like trying to get a three way model to balance and come back to 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 no difference is um it's not a bad challenge to set yourself. If you can do that, correct? Then you can pretty much add, add value anywhere, you know, and enjoy adding value as well. So. Yeah, what I'd, what I I'd recommend people. What I'd suggest Sorry. to people is is make sure it balances from when you start, and so it never gets off track. Because once <laughs> yeah. it's off track, yeah. it's a nightmare to get back. So yeah. you know, put an error check to say it is imbalanced. Surely, when you start, it would be imbalanced, but somewhere along the line, you go off track, and then working your way backwards is a nightmare. Anyway, that's yeah, a seems bit of a like tip. you're speaking. From, yeah, sounds like you're speaking from experience in that one. Lance. <laughs> <laughs> yes, five hours of trying to find a balancing <laughs> error is not fun oh god oh dear you're taking us back all right well look that's that really appreciate you sharing that with us um in terms of maybe other resources like i i'd love um to share the the blog you mentioned in our show notes and also fmi uh, and some other resources too but um in terms of maybe a book um, or other resources you could recommend our listeners follow up on uh, what would they perhaps be yeah look uh you know nab um nab is a, it was an incredible place to work and um, one of the things that they um, brought into the finance function was this concept of growth mindset and um, they gave every finance person um dr carol dweck's uh, book on growth on, oh. on, on, on mindset and um Everything that we were doing uh, uh, you know, at that point in time was 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 going to be around this concept of um, not yet. So I think um, you know the key thing is I you know I read the book. Um, it resonated with me one hundred percent. It's not just about finance. It's actually about your career as a parent. Um, you know, as, as a oh. professional sportsman. You know, and and the concept is um, you know if you're faced with a challenge, um, you know you have two options. You can take a growth mindset approach or a fixed mindset approach. And the fixed mindset approach says it's too hard. The people who do it are just born that way and I'm never going to be able to do it. And so they give up. And, you know, business is too tough. And so um, it's just ne never, never going to work. But, um, you know, uh, Dr. Dweck actually did some research and actually realized that people who were less privileged um, had less money um, were actually exceeding kids who had privileges purely because they pushed themselves time and time again. And so this is the story about, I cannot do this yet. I'm not good at it yet. Like financial modeling, no one, no one gets born as a professional financial modeler. It just doesn't happen. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you, you, don't, you don't suddenly take a, a, you know, the, the, the blue pool or the red pool and say, hang on, I'm going to go and I'm going to suddenly be Keanu Reeves and be this cool modeler. No, it doesn't happen. Right, it's about hours and hours of long, hard slog, and and that's how you get better at it. And so I think, you know, again, it, you know, you can apply it to not just financial modeling, but to anything. Anders had a great um, 
made a great uh, statement on on one of your podcasts back. He says, "Get off your desk and go have a conversation." Oh, right? Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love that. When I heard yeah. that, I thought, you know what? That's exactly what people have to do. And so, what's Jeez, stopping man. you from doing that? Well, it's the fear, right? And so, oh, that's that, that's too scary. So I think you, you you've got to do it. You, you know, you've got to you know you're not going to be good at business partnering sitting behind your desk. And you know what? You're probably not going to be good at business partnering the first time you go and you stand in front of a customer. But over time and with resilience and learning, you will get there. And I think that's that that's the point. So I think definitely the readers should have a look at um, the book on mindset by Dr. Carol Dweck. There's a great uh, a YouTube clip as well, um, um, okay. which I often show that's people. So um, you know, maybe you want to put it on. Uh, on a link to um to, to the podcast yeah thanks thanks for, thanks for sharing and uh, those great resource ideas i really appreciate that and look um also really appreciate you just sort of bouncing between the modeling and the business partnering because i think people have this uh, image in their minds of people building models in dark rooms perhaps <laughs> uh, I, I i don't know about you but like how can you build a decent model if you're sitting behind your desk and not talking to Correct. people and taking exactly. in the latest drivers and and refining it and reiterating for what a better model so um so appreciate that so look um lance you know in terms of if some of our audience want to follow up with you and um continue the conversation where's the best place they can find you at linkedin 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 um so yeah i mean you can connect with me on linkedin or um um, of course you can go to my website www.modelcitizen there's no e in citizen so c-i-t-i-z-n um the domain was taken by fashion models so i couldn't take a citizen (laughs) Um, so, uh, modelcitizen.com. Um, and you know, if you spend a few seconds on the website, there's a pop-up and you can register and get, get, send us your details, but, um, you know, either through the website or through LinkedIn. Oh, that's fantastic, Lance. Well, look, uh, thanks again for being such a great guest and covering a topic again, that I don't feel that we spend enough time on. We just assume that, you know, we get our accounting qualifications and can model and, model a business and somehow produce value magically and also putting to bed that excel is dead but also (laughs) touching on the fact that we need to get up from behind our desks as well if uh, we want to be adding value and and improving the value we offer the business so lance thanks again for coming on the show sure pleasure thanks andrew thanks for inviting me so there you have it hope you enjoyed today's show If you'd like to know more about our guests today, their bio, and follow up on the resources mentioned during the show, you can find all the relevant links and more at sitnshow.com. There you'll also be able to get access to earlier shows, read the latest blogs. There's also an opportunity to subscribe to our newsletter, which will give you heads up as to when the next show is coming out, latest events, news, and anything that's going to be relevant to help you have a fun, rewarding, and successful career in finance and accounting. And just before you go, we really appreciate your feedback. If there's something we can do better on the show, something that's not working, or something you'd like to see, even a guest you'd like for us to invite onto the show, someone who you think might be able to benefit you more and also the rest of our community, please let me know. You can email me. I'm at andrew at sitnshow.com or feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Just drop me a message so I know how you found me and we can connect. And really, it's our community that will make the show. If we keep engaging and driving each other on, we'll keep on building our strength in the numbers. And when all is said and done, if we can do the numbers better and finance better, we'll create more opportunities for ourselves, our friends, our families, our communities and our businesses. So until next time, have a good rest of the week. Take care and let's keep building our strength in the numbers. 